Yo, what is up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use all the kit commands and everything you need to know about the Stigmat servers in Ark. This is a PvP cluster. So first, whenever you load into the servers, you're going to notice these random bases around the map. And these are the admin bases, but they are just for every single person that starts on these servers. You can end up having a crafting station and just be able to get started from here. So let me get into the details of the server. So you're going to click F1 to open the shop and you're going to see like the tab the welcome the settings and starter kit so i'm going to break it down for this so for starters everyone's going to want to use the starter kits and the starter kits you're going to realize that at level 110 and it says it in the settings but at level 110 you do not get to use your starter kits anymore for a new person you're going to want to do slash starter and that'll give you a kit Okay, so I had to do slash buy kit space starter space one. So I could buy one starter kit. So from there, I will do slash starter, if I could type correctly. And so I end up getting my starter kit. I'm going to show you guys each individual starter kit. So you end up getting a Ravenger for the starter. You get food and two canteens. Now I'm going to do slash starter base and this will give you all let me level up myself so I'm not encumbered so this will give you all this stuff it is not SS which SS is ran on these servers but it's a nice little start you know like get your smithy mortar and pass the refining force so you can end up pretty much basing around the map and then slash tools and you end up getting some tools to start off with as well now you guys get three kits per survivor Per Steam ID, doesn't matter if other people are in your tribe, everyone gets three kits. So you can end up having three per Steam account, like I said. And to use them, you cannot be on the Ravenger or any other dino in the game. You have to be on the floor. If you are on a dino, some kits will not work. So it's easier if you're just standing off on the side or whatever you need to do to not be on the dyno so you can end up using these kits because sometimes people end up not understanding that whenever they use the kits and they're on a dyno it does not work that has been an issue throughout many people that I have seen playing in these servers I'll do flak armor so now I end up getting a flak set and I'll do taming kit and so now with this taming kit, you end up getting a crossbow, a dino tracker, so you can put this in your dino and be able to track them. I don't know really how it works. You can end up reading it. I don't really use these things. I don't need to, like, bother with these things. So I'm guessing you just put it in their inventory and you can find them that way. Somehow, not too sure how that works. But anyway, with this kit, you end up getting a crossbow, trank arrows, narcotics, bolus, spyglass, Anything you really need to go around to go tame some dinos. So now I will use the advanced taming kit. And what this will give you is a hundred more narcotics, a long neck, trank darts, and an awesome spyglass. Now the awesome spyglass, as most people do know, it tells you the stats before and after tame and after leveling on each side. So this is definitely helpful for breeding or taming the dinos that you are wanting to play late game into. So now that all the taming kits and everything are done, all the starter kits, so like I said before, you end up getting three of each one of these for free. After that, you have to buy them, but after you hit level 110, you do not end up getting more of these. You cannot buy them anymore. You can make a new survivor and go off the server. The, Steam, uh, the shop points are actually connected to your Steam account. So if you make a new character and you go buy more starter kits or whatever on another character under level 110, it, you can keep on doing that if you really want to. But at that point, you're probably already too far in the game to even need taming kits, and you're probably going to be focused on getting your blueprints anyway. So from there, I will show you how to get blueprints. Now you can either get them from drops and everything like normal, but so the rates in these servers for starters, your max player level is 250, 200 without the ascensions and everything. Your dino level is 300, tech dino level is 360, and the wild egg spawns, so as in like wyverns and um, the dinonicuses and stuff like that is 380. 
they can be leveled up 250 times after they are tamed. So after you raise a dino, tame a dino, or anything, you level it 250 more times. And then you get all your Ingrams unlockable at 140. So you would do un slash unlock all space Ingrams. So from there, you will actually unlock all the Ingrams. But sometimes there is a problem with doing that. So if you transfer servers, you'll lose all the Ingrams. All you'll have to do is retype them in. It's not that hard. So that's how you end up getting started off, getting your Ingrams and everything like that. So you can end up doing the boss fights. They are 10 times. So if you would get a hun uh, 18 element from one of the boss fights, you would get 180 element from that boss fight. So that's how the boss fights will work. So from here, you can end up seeing the Ascension levels and the Chibi levels and stuff. So you get an extra 15 for Alpha Ascension, extra for Island, extra 15 for Alpha Rockwell, extra 15 for Genesis, and plus 5 levels for the Chibi. Okay, so now that the settings are all named, it is also 25 times Taming, 20 times Gathering, and 24 times Breeding. So every single player points and dino points are completely different. So as you can see under the rates tab, it'll tell you exactly how they are. So the oxygen is 2 times per point, weight is 20 times per point, max speed on characters is 200. Dino stats is 20 times per point, and max speed for dinos is 250. There is classic flyers, so you can end up leveling up all your flyers again like you used to whenever the game was like 3 years ago. So the points, how do you get points? So every single day, so every 24 hours, you can vote three times on the servers. So how do you do that? So you would click F1, you click vote now. This will take you to the website to vote. All you have to do is click vote, click on your Steam. You might have to sign in if you're not already signed in. Just sign straight in. I am blocking this off because it is my credentials. So now it's voted. So now you can do this three times, but you can't do it to the same exact server. You do it to three different servers. So you just keep on doing this. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time. Okay, so now that is all done, and you have voted completely, all you have to do is go back to ARC, and you would do slash claim. Now, it, it'll take a few seconds. You get 100 to 150 points per vote. Since you could vote three times every hour, I just got 120, 100, and 126. So that is 346 points that I just got from doing pretty much absolutely nothing other than pretty much advertising the server. So you can actually trade points as well. So how do you do that? I don't have a tribe member in the server whatsoever. So I can't really show you. But all you have to do is, as shown here, so under shop and the F1, you can end up seeing that you can end up trading with another player. Now these quotes are required. If you do not put the quotes, it will not work. It has to be the survivor name of whoever you're trying to trade with. Now this will give them however many points you want to give them that you have. Don't know how many points you have? You do slash points. Now this will show you exactly how much points you have. So what can you do with the points other than trading? You could end up going to F1 and you can actually see you could buy more starter kits if you really want to. Or you could save up enough points. You can buy boss fights. They show you right here all the boss fights. They cost a lot of points, but you end up getting all the boss fights and all the tech engrams for those. You can end up spawning in trophies and the kits to do the boss fights. And then you can also go through and buy pretty much whatever you want. XP potions and XP dino potions. They give you like 2 million XP, which is a lot of XP if you end up just taming a dino or whatever. That's like almost 100 levels. And keep in mind, it is 250 levels per dino after it is tamed or raised. Then you can end up buying resources for very cheap just to get you started. And you can just keep on scrolling through the list and seeing exactly. It tells you how much points they are, 
how much you get of what and what the command is. So to buy these, so if I wanted to buy these darts, I would do slash buy space darts 100. For 45 points, that'll get me 100 trank darts. It's easy to actually keep on going through, and you can also buy blueprints. So if you end up scrolling all the way down, and you'll see the item kits blueprints, and from here as you scroll down, you'll see the blueprint commands. Now these work the same as any command. Slash buy, space, and then put exactly what it tells you the command is. It's pretty much straightforward. And then same thing with dinos. You can also buy dinos. So the level 225s that you can buy for cheaper for 250 points or whatever the dino points is. So they all vary what dino it is. Obviously, the better the dino, the more the points. So the level 225, it does not come neutered. But you buy the level 449, it comes neutered. So you can't just have perfect 300 tames right off the bat to start breeding. It's not how that works. you got to actually have a little bit of taming in the game. So you're going to still have to tame level 300s or whatever if you wanted to progress into your breed lines. Now, you can do this for most dinos. I know all the starting and farming dinos are in the shop, as well as the Carquinos. You could buy rock elementals and stuff like that if you really want to. Uh, Reapers. You can pretty much just endless amount of dinos that you can end up buying. So now that you guys understand the shop, how the points work, and how to use the commands, now if you go into the Discord, okay, so here's the Discord. So from here, if you scroll up to the top, news and updates. So before he even puts in the updates into the server, he's going to end up showing them in the news updates. So you can end up seeing them first handedly. It gives you 10 times element like I have already said. And then he has changed many mods and every single time he does a change in these servers, he always puts it in the news and updates. In his cluster, if you want to find other servers to play on, you can end up just joining off of the servers and links and it tells you right there. The server settings, if you really want to scroll through, it's pretty much all in the shop, but it just tells you all the settings in the server. It's pretty straightforward. And the shop, it gives you the links for all the uh, dinos and items and everything. So if you don't want to scroll through the shop, you can actually just copy and paste them through these links. And then the rules, there are rules. Got to keep global chat clean. Don't camp players, preventing them to build up. Don't block obelisks or rare explorer notes on any map. Um, then tolerate English and French in global chat. Please keep other languages in tribe chat. Do not attack admin tribe structures, dinos, or members. Starter tribe. Those are like the bases that are going to be around. Admins are built up, but they do not raid. If you get raided by an admin, contact the owner of the server, Stigmet, and he will completely deal with it and reimburse you for everything you lost as if you had proof of everything you had and the admin that raided you will be getting banned from the server so you don't really have to worry about too much of the admins raiding you if you do try to have proof of what you had before so if you end up getting a big base just copy it or like take a picture of it whatever and just have it for yourself in case you do end up getting wiped by an admin then stigma can actually see everything you actually had before and he can reimburse you with everything so if you're an admin tribe you are not to attack anyone like I said that's a rule do not attack admin structures like I said because if you do you will end up being banned from the server because those admin structures are just for people that don't even want to play PvP they just want to PvE and there's bases around to help you out to get started so if you raid them you're really just like hurting other people in the server not really even the admins so for per map you have three max main bases unlimited turrets whatever just normal bases three main bases so you can have two in the center one on Ragnarok and that's all you can have for main bases now two tuck teleporters you can end up having 200 turrets on each but you can only have two of them throughout the map and then no limit to turret bases traps teleporters etc so you can end up having teleporters around the map but with no turrets whatsoever on them so you can have unlimited bases traps teleporters with no defenses around them but if you have defenses around them you only get a max of two 
spam on the near your bases and teleporters no point to spam around the map because that's really just going to hurt everyone else in the server and if you end up just spamming out the entire map well now you're just causing other people to not even want to play on these clusters and we want to populate the servers that's the whole goal of these servers abuse is really the result in all structure wipe of tribe linked to it abuse of any of these rules will be and the result of a full to all structure wipe of the linked tribe there will be no warning so if you end up abusing any one of these so let's say you have 10 main bases or five main bases well if an admin spots that you have five main bases with over 200 turrets on each you're gonna get wiped that's all that's gonna happen is the admins are just going to delete all your structures and you're gonna lose everything you have so just Keep it to your main bases, lock down a big base location, and just build up from there. Raid other people, have fun in these servers. Don't camp people, don't raid them, and then keep raiding them to prevent them from building, because that just makes people not even want to play the game. And then it just tells you about the admin base staying away, that way so you just don't die. And then, so if you want to trash talk anyone, there's a salt chat. So you can trash talk pretty much anyone here, no consequence. Now if you end up going to general over here or talking global and you just trash talk an admin's more than likely going to tell you just take it to salt and if you keep on doing it you might end up getting like a timed ban from being able to type in the chat on discord so now that i have described everything about these servers there is a server well there is a map that the owner has made for himself i will be doing a huge map video showing everything about the map and everything like that Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it really helped out on how to do the starter bases and starter kits and everything about the shop and the server. I hope to see more people in these servers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.